Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. That has been shown in a number of contexts that that can happen in rodents. But they also, I think it's worth pointing out that rodents have, their energy expenditure is more plastic than ours. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I want to go back to that because we. this is something, this will tie into what we're about to talk about, but you have a person who weighs 200 pounds, person who weighs 160 pounds, they're the same height. The 200 pound person loses 40 pounds. They're now 160 pounds. The other person's always been 160 pounds. On the surface, they look identical. In fact, let's pretend they're siblings. But one was obese, and he's now post-obese. The other was never obese. Let's pretend that that one that lost the 40 pounds has really kind of dialed it in and doesn't yo-yo. He manages to stay there. It's three years later. Are they the same person yet? No, probably not. They're, so Rudy Leibel has done studies where... I think they've had people out to a year, maybe two years, where they have them weight reduced. And the starvation response, this leptin-dependent starvation response, he hasn't seen any sign that it goes away. So could it maybe be possible? <clears throat> could it maybe be possible under some circumstances? Maybe. But um, the evidence that I've seen suggests that it is at least not typical. Um, I do think, so I want to specify that I think that the uh, set point around which the lipostat regulates can change based on dietary and environmental variables. And so, for example, you know, just to give a, an example that you'll be familiar with and others probably listening will be familiar with, if people go, if you take someone on a typical diet and put them on a low carb diet, you don't have to tell them to reduce their calorie intake. That will occur spontaneously and they will lose, lose fat and end up to, in the typical person comfortably being at a lower weight. They're not experiencing the starvation response. And you can see this on other diets as well. So I think there are things we can do to change the set point. However, that person, that doesn't mean that they are cured. So if they went back to their other diet, if they just went back to how they used to be eating, so they're not maintaining this attempt for weight reduction anymore, they generally will go back to where they were. So it's not that there's a durable resetting of the set point to like flipping a switch and resetting, like restarting your you know computer. It's more like the set point has been modified because it's in a different environment. And as long as you maintain that change, you can maintain the effect. But if the change goes away, then the effect goes away. Where do we think is the greatest window of vulnerability for someone? Just going back to these two hypothetical individuals who, and let's just now make it even more, let's take the genes out of it. Let's pretend they're identical twins, uh, born in the same household, uh, clearly they both can, they both possess the genetic traits that would allow them in the right environment to become obese. Um, <clears throat> but one of them, you know, let's just say had an injury in high school that kind of kept him home from playing sports. And he, he, he ended up playing more video games and kind of eating more. The other one was more active. So that explains why when they're now 40 years old, one's 40 pounds overweight, the other's not. Are there windows in a person's life when they are more susceptible to that resetting of a set point, a higher and higher set point, which it sounds to me like it never goes down. It's a monotonic crank, right?